Hello and welcome to video tutorial number seven. My name is Eamon Killian and I've been doing a series of tutorials on how to get started using IBM software. So far I've looked at uh, how to use the customer portal, how to register, how to get your first virtual machine and how to use some object storage and a little bit about uh, FTP clients like CyberDuck and FileZilla. I want to change the sh or shift the attention now to something a little bit more structured in terms of accessing your software account. To date, any time that I have done something has either been directly through the customer portal, which is absolutely fine, or using Secure Shell on a public IP address to gain access to my virtual machine or indeed the object storage. Now, those veterans of software would probably say, well, you know, you shouldn't really be doing systems administration work on the public IP address, and they'd be absolutely correct. That is why one of the uniques with software is you are provided with a public IP address and a private IP address. And it's on the private IP address that you should be doing your systems administration or DevOps style functions. So why have I not used the private IP address so far? Well, this video will explain exactly why. Um, there's a little bit of setup required to get yourself configured correctly to use the private IP address. So it's not as simple and purely for the purposes of efficiency, I've used the public IP address. Um, it's time now to start using software in a more structured way and tutorial 7 here will provide the answers as to how you get set up using the software private IP address on a VPN tunnel. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need Java. So if we check and I've moved to another machine to do this tutorial. Um, this is a brand new machine and I'm just going to verify the version of Java. And this is what I expected. So this machine has no Java runtime environment running. Hence, no pop-up, I would say trusted or anything else, just nothing happening. We can double check that by opening up a uh, terminal. Ignore that. No Java runtime present, yeah, as expected. So, how do we get Java? Well, let's just go to Java. And free download. Agree and start your free download. Now I think for the purposes of efficiency, I downloaded it earlier, indeed I did, but you would click that button and away you would go. So I've already downloaded it and I'm ready to rock and roll here. So let's install Java. That takes a few seconds. Bubble, done. Now it started off uh, Chrome, and this is one of the foibles you'll notice using a Mac. Uh, Chrome is a 32-bit, um, Java 7 requires 64-bit, as it says here, so we can't use Chrome for this uh, aspect of these videos. I have been using Chrome up to now, we can't use it for this. So what I also have to do now is I have to stop Safari. I'm going to quit Safari and start it again which is the easiest way for us to see whether it's working. So Java version check. And we hit the version check. Now we wait a couple of seconds. It's a way detecting it. Yeah, there we are. Version seven, update 67. It's all installed. Lovely. Now, the next thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to change our settings in software. Um, so I've put my settings back to a default setting as if I'd never used software or I'm a first time customer. So we're gonna log in now to the control panel and actually walk through the steps that you need to do before we come back into Safari and start setting up for the VPN tunnel. And I'm gonna pause the video there and we'll start up software.
So as I said, the next thing we want to do is we want to go to um, oops, to control.software.com and let's log in the software. Uh, it's already held it in my cache, which is fine. So I'm logged in and I can see my devices are here, just as we always do. But I've set this back to be as if you had never used um, the VPN. So in order to start using the VPN, the first thing you're going to need to do is go to Users, click on your username, could be this or another user you created, and set a VPN password. Critical you do that. Save those changes and then go to VPN access. You'll see it says none. So we want to click on none and we want to change that to be, well, might as well have both SSL and PPTP for the purposes of this video. So that's all done. That's all set up. So uh, we can log out or quit. Let's just kill the page. Uh, we know Java's there. We now know that we've set a password and we know we've enabled VPN. So we now need to access the uh, software VPN gateway. Now, in order to do that, and I know we're going to need this, you want to actually quit Safari. Start a terminal window on a Mac and we actually want to start Safari in root mode. So we want it to have administrator privileges. So we're going to start Applications Safari uh, Mac, uh, so it's Mac OS, uh, no contents, Mac OS and Safari. So we want to start it in admin mode which will allow us access. There we go. Okay, so we've got our Safari running in administrator mode. Let's check the preferences. You want to go to um, Safari, up in the uh, top corner, Safari, preferences, and here's where you can see all the settings for your Safari. Under security, internet plugins, because this is a Java applet, a Java plugin, we want to just manage this and see what's in here. Okay, so there's nothing there at the moment at all. Okay, that's fine. Now let's go to VPN, and I'm going to use Amsterdam because that's where I set up my, um, my software virtual machine. And this is going to ask us to log in to the VPN portal. Um, okay. Now it's going to start. Ah, it said it already. Java blocked for this website. That's what I was checking in those security preferences. So we're going to trust this. And it's going to fire up, hopefully. Yep. Connection is untrusted. Certificate not valid. Don't worry about that. Just say continue. It's failed to download the software. You may get this. Now, this is because of those security preferences. So what you have to do again is go up to your top left, Safari, preferences and in manage websites under the security bit go to Java we've now got VPN but rather than just allow it run in unsafe mode critical you do that then trust it done and now if we reload the page Hopefully, it'll ask us to continue. Hopefully, 
it should start downloading it. Yeah, and there it is. So it's now downloading. There we go. I'm going to say don't show this again. It's now up and running live. So when we go to our terminal now, um, I want to launch another terminal. When we go to our terminal, we had a private uh, IP address. Sorry, let's just go back and get that private IP address. Go to our device list, and we have the public IP address that we were secure shelling in on, but we also have a private IP address. And now we can use that private IP address. I'll be root at and the private IP. And there we are, we're in on the private IP address. So we have a VPN tunnel running to software in Amsterdam in this instance and it's all configured and working so it's a little bit more fiddly um, than I guess you'd expect from just a straightforward secure shell to it but once it's there you have it now installed on the machine or at least in the browser in the next part I'm gonna look at how you can get this running so that your VPN tunnel is there permanently as an app and that will revolve around, um, if I bring Safari back up again, that will revolve around installing the actual standalone Mac OS VPN client. My name's Eamon Killian. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much.